Okay, so you're wearing blue. Lee is wearing blue, so maybe he wants to go long. Hey, I got something, something to say. I'm just so sick of hearing everyone complain. I know it's tough and I know there's pain. But hitting bottom is the only way to change. So I'll keep hustling, you keep struggling, bitch. I'm Welcome, everybody. This is Crypto AMC, and today I'm interrogating Fibonacci Lee. You can see the chart displayed up on the screen. We're going to go through this and we're going to see and blow holes in Lee's analysis to try and look for weakness. And Lee is prepared. He said he's ready for whatever I can throw at him. So, uh, Fibonacci Lee, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good. And you? Oh, didn't I'm switch good, on, <laughs> didn't switch on the, the ring lights. <laughs> <It's a bit laughs> <dark. laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. You look good. You look good in the, in the, in the uh, darker light as well. Um, right, guys, let's get into this. So before we do, if you're new, please hit the like if the content is going to be good. Don't do it if you don't. And uh, also subscribe to the channel. We do these, these type of analysis daily. The idea is that Bitcoin is a growing, moving organism, and we need to keep our fingers on the pulse to always know whether we are in the wrong or in the right. That said, um let's get busy but well, actually i'm bringing up your chart i'm going to quickly bring it onto the screen but you know while i'm looking at this i'm thinking oh well we've got a couple of big announcements today as well um mm -hmm. and uh in true crypto EMC style, um, me and Lee, we do not prepare these type of streams. We just wing it as always. And uh, so when do you want us to talk about this, buddy? Before or after we, we, we grind Bitcoin? Up to you. <laughs> you, you are the, the speaker here. So <laughs> I'm just doing, you know, just going to answer your questions today. So I'm the puppet first. master. I so get to you press wanna, all the buttons. Yeah, I can't. I can't do anything. You have the control. So up to you. Yes, Ricardo. Today Lee is going to have to talk. Then. So yes, it's all Lee today. I'm just going to be the easy one asking the questions and then um, letting him look for answers. So is this going to be a confusing day for anybody that is new, though? Uh, new to trading, I believe so. Yeah. Um, if you are following us for quite a while, you know that we always have, you know, a bearish and, and a bullish um, analysis. And yeah, we're, go we're just going to try to dive into where the supports are, um, where, where the bulls may have lost support, um, where I'm thinking that, you know, we can still go down a little bit further, but can we bounce from here as well? Yes. And yeah, a lot of things going on going, um, inside my head. And then it's all, it all depends on which time frame are you trading. At the end of the day. So we're also going to talk about this, guys, the strategy performance today. So this is a this is an interesting one. And uh, we're gonna it's gonna reflect back to what the premium group did in the last week. And the reason why is like we said, we're gonna we've got our affairs and our ducks slowly in order. Look, we guys we tend to be bad with admin. Now our admin is up to scratch, and uh, these type of um, updates is also going to be made available regularly and i mean really regularly so that you guys can keep track of the performance how the calls are playing out and also what we're going to be doing is um we're going to be dissecting uh that specific strategy the performance it's claiming to give and also want to try and explain to you guys how this then plays out on a bigger time frame but now lee bourbon actually I've got your screen up there, buddy. And uh, okay. oh yeah, and before we do that, guys, stop right hand side. There's a little QR code. So if you want to go join the Discord channel to this, go sign up with the Discord channel. We have a lot that's cooking in the Discord channel. So you're always welcome to become part of the EMC frenemies. Right, Lee. So we're looking at Bitcoin, buddy. What are you what are you thinking? Okay, I'm thinking first. I wanna, you know, I wanna, I wanna see where are the biggest demand or support for Bitcoin in that case, because Bitcoin has been dropping um, since yesterday. 
yesterday I was dressed red, <laughs> that's why it dropped. <laughs> um, and then where did we end? Where did we stop? So we stop right inside this area, which is the green box. So it's a, we can easily pick up this as a demand zone. And it's a daily chart. So daily demand zone, usually it's strong enough to hold it for at least a day, at least, you know, one try or two try. I don't think that the sellers will be so strong to just go through this and then just, you know, let it, let Bitcoin bleed. If we lose that demand zone again, I've got another reload zone here. This box there from 20,000 to 22,900. Actually, we were just went above this. Um, we worked inside this reload zone as well within the demand. And that is the 618 level from this pivot here at 18,800 to the top. Okay. This one is the fixed reload zone 618786 from that move. I've got another load zone at the bottom here, also 618796, but for this entire move. Okay. So you're playing exactly. basically two angles. Yeah, time frame rise. Smaller time frame, bigger time frame. Those are all the area where the bulls may, you know, may want to fight again this drop, the sellers. Now, this drop here, it happened that like I said, I'm going to repeat that. We never touched 24.4, which is the zone I wanted to um, press to go in. And then if buyers need manage to defend those area and push it back, then the target will be, again, that box. Make a higher, higher again on that one. And we could count like one, two, three, four, five, something like this to finish this whole wave. Okay. But the problem is now, on a smaller time frame, we're going to see that this gray area that I've highlighted here, we can call it a secret, um, secret, a hidden support or resistance zone. As you can see, we from the top, price went back to this zone again, bounced back, lost it, come back. We had a huge fight on Sunday inside this one. And then as soon as we broke this level, now the price just smash it down until it's demand zone. So this area now, if we do claim back, now we, got, we, we were facing a lot of resistances at different level. One of the level will be obviously from that smaller drop, the 61876, this area. And if you go on above that, that will be the hidden support or resist, um, support or, or demand, resistance or um, no, demand or supply or resistance and support. So this was resistant become, uh, was support become resistance, sorry. So if you are going up, that will be yeah. our resistance. And that will be the supply zone as well within that blue box there. So that will be a, a big um, hard fight for the bulls to push it through. So that's on daily. Now, if we dive a little bit in a smaller time frame, I think we've, we, we've, we've seen that. Uh, what I'm interested in now is more in 15 minutes chart because this is what we um, that I'm looking most of the time and base my trade on those chart on the 15 minutes. This morning, four o'clock in the four o'clock in the morning, I had an alert. So just wake up and then look at the chart, and we are around this area, and that's the area that that I wanted to try a small long. Knowing that, I, you know, that when we come here, when RSI was making already a bullish divergence, we were bouncing back, and I also might say that if this is not the end, then I'm, I'm expecting a last leg to go down to this area and then push it up. So basically, um, this is the trade that we are currently in. And my target, I won't be sorry, very, uh, very greedy on that one. If we close, like you say, like you know now, if you close about 23.6, my first target to close a trade, if you want to be in and out, will be 21,379-ish, uh, 21, this area at 32. That will be the small little resistance. And if you manage to go through that, obviously that great box will be 20,700. 20, that is a that is an aggressive trade now, Lee. Am I? That's going to be a it, more it, of a. What type of play uh, is this? Going to be? I it, it should be in within a day. I hope that we're going to be done with that trade uh, with that trade today, or maximum. Yeah. Now, today will be we be set at two, and then maybe yeah. um, today tomorrow for six one eight eight seven eight seven eight six if we manage to go through. Um, pretty confident about that trade. Even though we are spending a lot of time here, because we are, you know, in this daily demand zone, 
and I've got my 618 box. So even if that trade fell, um, I think we are not far from, from this um, mid-term or the short-term bottom, and we will have at one stage a bounce back, even if this one fell. Let's say we've got our, we, we, we've got our stop losses. Let's say if we get stopped out at this level here, I think our stop loss is between, yeah, just below that green box. If we get stopped out, then we always have another opportunity to catch another long inside this area. Okay, so we have to wait a little bit. If we, if we get stopped out, we can still catch a trade within this uh, reload zone here. Yes. So the the main consensus is with what we are, what we're doing is at the moment there is not a lot of evidence saying that it's just going to want to shoot up in a straight line. It's possible, and because of that, it affords us the time luxury to wait for another entry. Well, it, it, it is possible based on the daily chart because uh, simply, you know, if the buyers want to fight this demand and the, uh, the 786, their target is obviously not, um, you know, if you want to defend this whole area on a daily chart, their target will be not only 21,379. They will want to go for another higher high until 24.5, um, yeah, 24.5 ish kind of area. But we think that post has to go up. I mean, sellers, you know, they have got a lot of uh, things now to defend as well. So they won't give it away that easy. And again, one of the biggest levels that, you know, we want to, or the sellers want to defend will be 22.4 and previous daily high will be 22.6. Because if okay. if the buyers can, can go above those levels, previous daily high at 22.6, it means that, okay, on a daily chart, we're turning bullish. At the moment, daily is bearish, right? We are in the, def uh, the the buyers are defending, but the sellers are winning territory. So in the daily chart, we are bearish. But if the buyers manage to go through and make another higher high compared to the previous daily high, now you turn the daily chart more bullish, okay. and then you can have a second try to go for uh, another higher high. Let's take a step back. Um, I want to quickly talk to you. Yesterday, we did uh, a lot of the earnings report markups. Big forex mm -hmm. companies, uh, you know, big stock, um, you know, large macro stock um, markups based on the fact that the earnings are coming out this week. And you also, after the, the main consensus was they were going to be short term bearish with a long term bullish upside. Do you have a chart ready for us? Is there something that we can have a look and see how it's playing out? Um, I can maybe show you the S&P chart. Yesterday we didn't, we haven't done S&P. Okay, bringing up your screen. So that's the S&P chart on the daily. Um, I'm gonna just open this one. Okay. Okay, on this S&P chart, yeah. From this low to this high, we lost 23.6, we even lost 32. So the next level of, you know, big, big support will be 35, uh, 3,500 points, 05, around this area. Now, what I'm seeing now on these charts is, okay, we had an imbalance here. That was the, the little area where there were uh, little to no transaction in the past. The, sma the price smashed it down, consolidated a little bit here, went up, come back down and left again two small gap. So now what, what, are the, what is the price doing? It's coming back up, fill the first gap, fill the second gap. And if you, if I move those lines that I drew, basically we, the price just stopped at the second gap. This line for me, this gap here, it's also like support and resistance. So now we are facing resistance to go up. So it's really crucial for the S&P 500 to go above this area, make a higher high to change this momentum towards put a, a little bit more bullish. But if you fail to do so, and that would be actually my next play for S&P. If I have to trade S&P, I'll be very careful if I'm long in this because there's a lot of resistances here. Okay. And if, if you calculate this move, we are basically right into the 618.786 area for the reload zone to add more short. So if I'm trading S&P, I will be trading just a little bit to the upside, but my favorite play will be shorting when I see, or when we're gonna see some kind of uh, weakness in this area. So S&P charts, for me, we are still more bearish. And it, I think it matches also my analysis on Bitcoin. I'm, I'm targeting only 
five. Yeah, a conservative kind of target now. Conservative target is 24.5. And then from there, we are higher, 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 higher probability to go back down again and test those 18, 19K, maybe even lower. On a bigger time frame, I'm still, you know, not bullish at all. <laughs> um, I think I told you yesterday, for me to turn bullish on BTC, on Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin needs to go for above 48 at the moment. So That's I, I, I the reality prefer to, be, the to, to stay, yeah, to stay within this kind of level so we can trade it. And then maybe in a month or two, you know, after a few months uh, kind of close, then we, we can uh, grind those level much easier. Because for now to go to 48, it's a huge, uh, huge step, right? Difficult. That's correct. I mean, I mean, I mean, we, we've got these simple things. If you, I'm going to bring up your daily chart daily. Can you quickly go give us a Bitcoin daily there? Um, if we look at a Bitcoin daily on its in its simplest form, what do we want to see before the daily goes up? If you can maybe just expand that. You need Bitcoin to go make a higher high. So even if you take the daily and you just flip to a normal line tool, when is the next higher high realistically? I mean, you're looking at some crazy high targets. So if we go above 33 even, that's going to be your, your first cry to try and hope that we can move this impulse. But the reality is if we're looking at this big picture, that 40s, yeah, that's bull market target. If we go that 46, only then you can talk about bull run and, and it's and, and, and. Watch it. That's, Watch it. Yeah, it's 48. So, I mean, we almost want another failure, just like we did with Cardano a while back, so that we can actually get a more sensible area to make a higher high, consolidate, come back and test, and then run. So that's the thing. So the relief rally, in all intents of purposes, we were looking for quick engulfing, you know, like a, catch everybody off guard but the reality is we trade what the chart is giving us and at the moment the chart is giving us no evidence of a quick little jump up to 33k mm, yeah look at the spread here from from 69 to 48 big step 48 to 32 you know still big <laughs> a little bit smaller but still big now if you take this 32 to 24 or 24 to 2 a little bit smaller is that yeah, we're losing you know, momentum to the downside, but we're yeah, not. So it's is, not is that is that small enough for us to make in one step go above 30, uh, 32,000? It's still to me, it's still, it looks still difficult. So if well, you make another wanna... step lower here around 16k, you know, just to swap those lows where people are, are buying long and already in this area, stop them all one last time, get, going back to 16k, 14k around this area. That you know, we'll and then from there we will have another step, assuming the next stop will be something like this with a with another high like this here. Then it's much smaller for, for Bitcoin to reverse the trend. Yeah, and, and let's let's do it simple like this. I want to ask you guys in the comment section just to let us know who of you guys are really gonna feel comfortable buying 20 to 25? Give me a triple one if you're gonna be comfortable buying 25. And give me a triple nine if you're going to want to chase the price at 25. So triple one if you're comfortable, triple nine if you're going to want to chase the price. Let's let's get the let's get the point because this is important now because we we want to trade against people that's supposed to going to want to act on their impulses. They're going to act on their feelings. And if you're not even comfortable buying and chasing the price. How can you expect them to want to chase the price? Meaning there's no loss going to be if price even goes there. And that is, that is, that's thinking a contrarian way. Thinking how would other people react? Everybody is so sick and tired of hoping for this that they don't even care at this stage. And that now needs to die down as well. And um, yes, I like this unloading my bags. The reality is for, for a lot of people, if you really want to start farming, you want to farm now looking for this and using the fact that you're hoping that it's going to fail where Lee's eye is on that chart that would be a good area for you to start laddering out at some positions that you're overexposed free up the cash that's there you're not going to get the money back if you've lost but when we come down and Lee there's still a possibility of lower low that's the reality here when we come down what would you see? Well, what would you have? You will have a little bit the more. Reality, yeah. The reality of a lower low is um, 
to me is highly highly pro um, probable so this is a problem now lee because i'm gr i'm supposed to be grinding you and saying to you yeah but you're wrong and and, and, and but I, I i cannot help but to agree so i'm gonna try and be uh a, a but bull. i'm not saying that we go we i mean i don't i hope we're not dropping from from here right now <laughs> to go to, to make a lower low um i'm still you know even though we i mean we have a short we we did secure a short as um you know first the uh, Yesterday, when right, we, we said about it yesterday, yeah, yeah twenty to two, we have a short. So I'm still, you know, a little bit bull bullish today because of this demand zone, because of the reload zone. But I still have a chance to fight it back and go above, and then you know, get this imbalance area here. But once we have done that, then that drop is uh, still on the yeah, in my mind, and I still think that it is highly prob probable that we're gonna go for another lower. Not necessarily for that. Yeah, one thing to consider, guys. Um, I think it was an article from uh, JP Morgan Chase where they said that the the mining price for Bitcoin is currently sitting at about twelve thousand. Now, remember the narrative in the previous cycle when that was around six thousand dollars. So the argument was that Bitcoin will never drop below that because that's the cost of a Bitcoin, the real the realized cost of Bitcoin, and uh, so now everybody is kind of hell bent. I mean, give me a triple five in the in the in the chat if you agree that the that's a high probability of twelve thousand dollar bottom for Bitcoin. And give me a triple five in the chat if that's pretty much the resounding bottom target that everybody is waiting for. Let me quickly see if you guys are at because that's kind of what I'm seeing. And maybe Lee, the contrarian is mm -hmm. either we get that the market allows you to be right sometimes or we miss that target meaning that that five fifteen thousand that i'm looking at basically catches everybody unaware and that's maybe the beginning of a relief rate you know where oh we didn't get 12 oh shit, i need to get back in you know that fifteen thousand mm. level and then from that point smash it down and literally pummel everybody that was hoping to buy 12 by going maybe even lower for that matter no. Yeah, I don't. I don't see there's, if there's a use or need to go to twelve. Um, if you spend a lot of time within within this eighteen, seventeen, twenty-five k, I think a, um, a drop to sixteen, you know, fifteen, sixteen is more than enough to stop everyone else. That's a, that's well, the thing. The so, rally. yeah, sixteen k. So so that's yeah. the thing. So let's see how it plays out. The the main thing is if we trade is we kind of need to have a have a little bit of a um, have a, like a childish um, excitement over where price can go towards. You know, almost like you it's it's a journey instead of trying mm -hmm. to worry about your portfolio balance because we tend to do that. We tend to worry about the portfolio balance more than the journey. And when we look at the journey, we get experience and learn a lot. Okay, but that's a little philosophical. So let's leave that there. We've got a six to three k. That's what happened. It was crazy. It went from six to three k, buddy. So, um, right, Lee, let's get back to your chart now. I want this to be bullish. You've now explained a, a buy, and you've given me an area where um, you've given me an area where that that a conservative play is going to want to be, where resistance is going to move in. Now I want this to be bearish. I want a short today. Screw this going long. I want a short today. Now the obvious thing is a long takes you to a short. Somebody said to me, a friend of mine, and a short takes you to the long. But the reality is big picture wise. Will, how would you feel sitting on a short at around this level now? Big picture. Would it really pay for people to be in, in, in shorts long term anymore? Um. On a long term short is never <laughs> it never doesn't play um it doesn't pay very well. Uh, it all depends, you know, what time what time frame. You, you at the end of the day you're gonna pay a lot of fees as well to hold a position long term. Um, and we know that you know when the price drop it drops faster. Um That's than true. when the price when when the price is, is going uh, is going up. So I don't see the the necess the necessity of holding a short for a long term while knowing that if the drop happens, happen in, in a few minutes. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So we've got a comment here. It depends if you have a recession. It can go lower than everyone expected. 
But I think everybody already knows there's going to be a recession. It doesn't catch anybody off guard anymore. So that's also another tricky thing because I had a question here about the FOMC and how the FOMC is going to con uh, might might uh, impact what we are talking about. And Lee, you, you've made it clear you don't really care about this. You know, you've got mm. your charts, you've got your support, you've got your invalidation. At uh, that so stage, trader, in my mind is more. I'm thinking about when is the reversal. I'm I'm hunting for any of solid reversal sign that that can tell us okay it's safe to go back in the market again and then look at the some old and then look at you know buying something back safe you know safe uh, the safest way possible i'm not trying to guess where we can bottom i'm not i'm not trying to guess if you are if we're going to 15k to 16k to 12k to 8k you call it call a number you know you're gonna get it one yeah, right but i'm i'm just waiting for any sign of reversal that's saying that okay but the bottom is 80 percent 70 percent 90 percent sure that the bottom is in and we can buy it back even a little bit at a higher price but at least it's a safer bet they were safer buy yeah there's that saying you treat the trend as if it's going to last forever which means then if the predominant large time frame trend is to the downside your mind's already made up look for look look for it to continue until it stops which means bitcoin can go to zero bitcoin can go into the hundreds again for that matter we we don't know we will never know a recession a collapse of the currency there's so many things that can happen so at the end of the day saying it's going to be there would be very reckless in a sense what we can do is every time we get to a lower level we will get the entries like we did the last time around like we got like we got already we will also get the shorts and we'll be able to sit back and have that that buffer and let the market do the fighting for us. And that then lies the power. So, Lee, let's talk about this, buddy. Trade group. This is the first strategy that we made available and, and for the for the trade group, the premium group. And we called it Strat 2. Actually, Strat 2A and Strat 2B, which has got different take profit goals. Strat 2B would be the more conservative strategy. So what you see here, guys, and I actually want to point this out. If you look at the average return in the right-hand side of the screen, it's got an average return if you take a hundred dollars per trade of a dollar and an average return percentage for the whole setup the whole bunch of trades of about 0 0.84 percent now guys let's be honest let's get real does this feel like you're going to get rich quick let me know in the chat would you really want to trade for 0 0.084 percent gains every day let's quickly see what everybody's opinions are are you going to get rich in the chat? Let's see. Um, because that's you know, kind of what, what, what drew me to trading, Lee, is I thought I'll be able to take $100 and quickly flip it to a million dollars and be okay with it and be rich. Well, it, I think it's the most difficult thing to learn in trading. Um, after you become you know, good at trading, you're going to realize that making 1% every single day, it's actually not that hard. It's actually quite easy. Every time, I mean, every time we enter a trade, there's not a single time where you don't see any kind of profit at any at one at one stage. You know, and if you tell yourself, "I'm going to stop trading after 0.84 percent or one percent again every single day," you just feel like I've worked so hard and I'm winning. The greed, you know, all those sentiments kicks in, and you can't stop. You can't take your profit at one percent. But if you compound one percent every single day, and this is where, uh, where you're gonna, you know, where you're gonna come, um, which, where, what you're gonna show us, Rudo, is it actually <laughs> it become very, very powerful, right? So yeah, so I wanna I wanna use a little bit of so mindset alert, guys. Mindset's like gym is leg day for people that go to gym. You know, we tend to wanna avoid it, but it's important that we have a little bit of mindset. You need legs to carry your big chest, you know. Um, so this is this is the thing. So I want to bring back this chart. I'm going to quickly bring up the screen again. So let's dissect the data here. If I look at this and I look at the way that this is pointing to, it really doesn't look that profitable. It actually feels like it's a lot of work for nothing. But what we do and how we go about this, and I'm going to quickly share my screen with you guys. Uh, let's just quickly bring it up. What I have here is a daily compound calculator. So on my screen, all that I'm saying, I'm looking at trading $2,000, and which is the recommended amount. Let's start with $100 and just, just have a little bit of fun. I just want to show you guys this is a little bit of an exercise. The argument is we're going to make, we, we're averaging around 0.84 daily, 
and we trade it for one month and we're not trading over weekends, which means the trade setups in the premium section comes as a, as a let's bring up the screen. It comes as a simple, you don't need to think about it. You just act. So the setups get called, simple as that, boom, boom, boom. You just act. You don't even need to worry about that. Let the probabilities play itself out. So with that being said, let's have a look at and how this works and we calculate that. So if we take a whole month of trading, and we only have a $100 portfolio, and we use the stats that we're currently uh, you know, reaching, we're looking at a, a percentage profit for the month of 21%. Now, if I said to you, Lee, I can give you 21% growth a month. Immediately, it looks completely different. Wouldn't you guys also agree? Let me know in the chat. Lee, you're muted, my friend. Well, put it this way, 21% a month is amazing. You know, I would guess like if you can guarantee anyone to make 21% a month, uh, no one will believe you. Um, it's, well, I think if you make 21% on your full, not on your trading portfolio, but on your on your full portfolio um, every single year, it's already an amazing performance. But this is now the trick. This is what crypto does to us. It messes with our minds. Because you see coins that go 21% in a day. Come on, man. This is bullshit. I'm not going to take seven trades for 21% in a month. And, and the reality is, if I think about it, if I've only got $100, I have to pay you $100 if I want to subscribe to the team, which is already a lot of money. And now you're only telling me I'm going to walk away with $21 at the end of the month. doesn't make sense. But let's take this a different step. Let's say, well, if you want to be serious, the reality is you're going to need to trade for something. Let's use the argument for $2,000. And the argument is, let's take and take this on a month basis. So now we're saying, let's make it rounded down and even 20% average profit on a month. Taking these stupid beginner copy-paste trades. That's all that you're doing. There's maybe two a day, and there's not even you don't even have to worry about it over the weekends, which means you don't even have to care whether Bitcoin's going up or down. You're just growing. And you're making your buy the dip money. And the argument is, if we take that 20%, and we say that this is now not daily, this is monthly. And we just want to do it for one year. Let's take away that month. One year and we want to calculate that. This is also not going to look life-changing for you, isn't it? Okay, 2,000, 20%, not weekly, sorry, there, I just, 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 just nearly got a heart attack myself. Guys. It's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at this, it looks like, well, look at it. $11,000 for the first year. Come on. Who wants to work 365 days for $11,000? But this is where it really becomes powerful. Two years in. Look at this. Calculate. Two years in. Now, while this loads, Leo, I'm going to ask you a question. I actually didn't discuss it with you. Uh, how many times on average, or how many years on average, does a trader remain a trader before they leave? What's that they never they never leave. <laughs> well, Lee will never leave. Let's just no. That I question. mean, you can you can ask anybody. I mean, I'm sure as soon as you touch trading, it's really addictive. And once a trader, always a trader. You can leave because you killed an account or you wrecked an account. But one of the day you're gonna come back to the chart and you're gonna take a trade again. Well, believe the thing you is, not, it's gonna happen. Most traders. This is a stat. This is not me. I'm just looking. Most traders trade for eight years and then they quit. Go and have a look. Go and have a read up on this. That's ah, the average. They change their trading style, but they don't quit. Maybe. That's the, remember now, Lee is the exception to the rule. This guy loves to trade, guys. I mean, he's, a, he is a, he's the ever trader. But okay, let's have a look at that. So in eight years' time of doing something stupid like that, look at the compound effect. I mean, it doesn't make sense. No, but and realistically the, speaking, you're power. not going to compound every single, every single year. That's it. You need to take profit. You, you need to take profit. Enjoy enjoy the profit that you're making. Um, one thing I want to point out as well, this setup that you see at 0.87% um, uh, return, it's really a conservative setup. Okay, so you can see, I mean, every time you lose, you lose $3, but when you win, you win sometimes less because you get stopped out before your full TP. Um, but all the other TPs. the win rate is hovering around 80%, 85 and 65. So average of 75, yes, that should be correct. 
at least for last week. But that is really conservative. And maybe it suits, you know, you that you're watching this show. It probably suits you, Rudo, because you hate losing a trade. Right? Mm. Um, I always want I to can, be right. I can take more losses um, on average, you know, and then still feel like I can trade. I, I got confidence in my setup. Um, yeah. So it it really depends on, on, on each and every single one of us. Um, yeah. That's, that's what I want to say. No, 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 guys. So there's the thing. So with that being said, what we've managed to do, and we always said to you guys what we try and do on this on this channel, we wanna we wanna try and help people. Now the reality is I cannot speed up time for you and I cannot do the effort. You're gonna have to do that. But what we can do is we can try and make it easier for you guys. Now we do have a team. Remember, these calls, all these are called by the team. This is the team of traders that we have at the back that's working and looking for the setup, hunting for the strategies, and, and so forth. So it's not just me and Lee sitting there. There's an entire team there. So that's the power of having multiple people looking at the charts. It means that we can benefit well, from you can, you can see there's, there's four traders, Ethereum C, one, two, three, and four. <laughs> okay, Rudo, can I, can I show you my Ethereum charts? And maybe Dot and Cardano before, um, before You're I- You're more than I, welcome I to do so. Let's have a look at that. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, for me, Ethereum chart is look uh, looking a little bit more bullish than BTC. BTC is already already come back. You see, in inside this previous range at six one eight, and this is still holding the thirty eight two level here. Okay. And the bigger bigger swing from this bottom to this high, the thirty eight two level is at uh, thirteen hundred and sixty three only. Um, and so. There were there was the previous imbalance. We touched, we were above resistance. The only problem I see now is we lost the previous imbalance area here. So we come back there. There is another level for me that is on a smaller time frame really important. We lost it as well. So now there is like we are fighting and we are we are working this such a two level. If we do lose that level, the next zone will be much lower. So coming back up bearish scenario bearish scenario if we come back up such a two on a retrace that would be the scalp trade if you are bullish uh, on that on this kind of uh, resistance and you we we're going back up that would be a scalp long but on a bigger swing play i think because we are below those imbalance and resistance area um, playing it short will be a safer trade on the long term as well Unless we climb back those level again, and we're going back to the uh, 1550 and 1600, unless we find support above this kind of gray, but the gray area, the gray um, zone here, and then we can try to tackle a new, a new higher high. But at the moment, I mean, same for BTC. BTC has kind of lost those level again, you know. So that's why on a scalp, the safer the, tip, the safest TP will be um, a really a small bounce back for a bigger swing on a short. Yeah, the thing is, if I look at your Ethereum, it kind of looks more bullish than Bitcoin, to be honest with you. It has, it has better bullish potential for me than Bitcoin. Yeah, but um, I like to play it safe for now. Um, and then this is basically, if we go back, this gray box, this gray area between uh, 14, call it 1500 and 14.5, 1450. This area, when I see Ethereum going, I mean, if you look at the FIB, will be... Uh, approximately about, yeah, about the set yet too. If you hold the set yet too and become support again, then we can tackle this area, 61.876. To our benefit at the moment is that the dominance is trending down with any Bitcoin rally. So that is one advantage that we have to tell that Ethereum does have, if there is a pump or a relief rally, uh, the opportunity or the possibility going towards that target. What else do you have for us there, buddy? Um, I run a poll on Twitter. Amazing how people have those interest in those alts, huh? because I mean the bull run. Everybody, well, I want, I want this, this coin, that coin. Today, you know, no one, no one cares about anything. Uh, just sentiment out there. But anyway, there was somebody asked for asking for dot. Um, I did chart a little bit of dot. So dot, if you look at the trend on a daily trend, yes, we turned to the other side. I think a lot of traders have noticed it. Uh, have noticed that from this top here. You, you put a basic um, trend line. We cross the trend line. We're on the other side. But now 
The only problem is, I think we are still far from calling this a bottom. Um, uh, more, again, same analysis, previous imbalance, we lost it, we are below. This one, as you can see, we tried to come back, test it. We didn't go above that, so we lost completely. We're co coming back to 618786. Um, if the price has to go up back up again, there will be um, there will be definitely another re um, resistance area, and the price they will try to smash it down again. We are on the other side of this trend line. Momentum could become a little bit more bullish, but since we crossed the line, we haven't made a proper higher high. I mean, eight dollar forty eight would be the first higher high that I'll be looking at. Even though, if you know, this was a, a nice reaction. We went above this level here, but the fact that we lost the set yet two here, we come back to 618. So I think we need a few days more within this area and check if we can hold this reload zone, making a, a higher lows again, a higher high on a smaller time frame, and try to go back up towards this $7.29, uh, $7.30. If we fail to do that, obviously, you know what's going to happen. It's going down. Um, yeah. So consolidation phase. And so far, I don't have any evidence that the bottom is in on dot, even though we have crossed the red line already. That is, well, let's leave it there. Lee, I kind of want to agree with you. I don't have much more to say. We're running out of time. What what else do you have for us? I had Cardano, but let's keep Cardano for tomorrow. I think I'm running out of time as well. <laughs> yes. Lee needs need to, to run. To, uh, He's yeah. got a meeting. So let's quickly talk about this now. So I saw this comment here. I would rather take one probably high time frame swing. Yes, that is the easier way. Remember, guys, that's kind of what I like to do. I like to trade. So I'll, I'll wait for months maybe sometimes to for the right trade and then milk it for all. But then, then I'm not looking at 20%. Then I'll probably try and triple the portfolio by adding in leverage positions as we got momentum. But at this stage, I kind of buy spot. And I cannot add to that spot by margin. And I cannot add to the margin by going futures because we don't have a trend that allows me to make money on spot. The only spot money I can make now is by sitting on my hands in dollars, meaning that I'll have bigger buying power. Waiting for that to happen, we're going to have to try and look at other ways to make money or trade, especially if you're living out of this or you dream to make a living out of this. And that's what we're trying to do. But with that being said, Lee, um, let's look about, uh, let's talk about this. I want to you managed to do this for us. You, you brokered a deal. MXC Global, buddy. What, what have you done there? Please tell us what is MXC Global. Another exchange. <laughs> um, yeah, we've been uh, uh, talking to MXC Exchange since last time. We said we wanted to find an exchange that you know that allows people from US uh, to trade. It's, and uh, MXC fits this criteria. So we've been talking to uh, to them and then, you know, um, come to a partnership. So they are sponsoring the channel. And so they are offering some some giveaways and freebies. Um, and we no, also are joining them to offer you some, again, some free slots into this premium, uh, premium membership on Discord. Yes. So, so the idea is, guys, when we, when we strike up a partnership, the idea, how, is, how can it benefit you? That's the whole goal today. Yes, it's always going to be it's always going to be a few things that you need to do, but the reality is how can it benefit you? That's the goal here. So when we look at the the, the partnership announcement, US guys, you get to trade without worrying about VPNs and stuff. So that's a nice advantage. You get to trade spot as well. Am I correct, Eddie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we're going to do as well, starting tomorrow, we're going to have an MXC Global Daily Trade Talk session on YouTube, which means that we're going to be looking at long time frame swings. What we know is that, especially people in the US, they need to tax the clear each and every trade. So making a 1% gainer doesn't really make sense for you if you're going to have to take 20 trades and declare that every day. So we're going to be looking at different strategies, a different way of trading as opposed to what we showed you guys. And with that in mind as well, what we want to try and do with um, the MXC Global is to give you guys, the viewers, opportunity to come and join the trade group and let the trade group do the hard work for you, which means you get the fish, you just copy and end up compounding the growth. And how we're going to do that is the first 25 people that sign up, the link is not available, 
um, let's sign up. And uh, for some reason, the link is at the top, Daily. So it's it's kind of it's kind of too late now. The link is there. It's too late, Joe. You can bring back the link, buddy. Uh, you've 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 jinxed us. <laughs> so the idea was that we wanna we wanna have a drawing, but now that's too late. Now you're gonna have to use it now. So the first 25 people that sign up get 31 days free access to the premium group. Go and play with it. See how it works. But there's a minimum. You need to have $125 signed in. So if you've got $125 funded to come and trade with us, you get access to this. And premium. no, but you know what? The best, the, the good news about this is um, if you fund it with $125, they are giving you $20 on top of that as a bonuses for your leverage account. So you can to have kind of, you know, a trade come and we'll come and have a little bit of trades on leveraged, uh, on leverage with us at the back within the premium group. And uh, yeah, and see how it goes. You, at, at, at no real cost of risk, which means it makes it easy for you guys. And the remainder will have 15 days, guys. So we want to see you on the other side. We want to incorporate you. We want everybody to join in and uh, come be part of the premium. Come be part of the trade group. That is where a lot is happening. And uh, Lee is always constantly backtesting a new strategy, running that. And he's doing that in front of everybody so that everybody can see well, how he's going about it, what is his goals, and so forth. And... Um, if you want to trade, you really want to trade, you want to be serious, come trade with the community. That's the end of the day. Uh, so that is awesome, Lee. So tomorrow we're going to be starting off with our first MXC daily rundown. We're going to be looking at the trading pairs. We're going to be doing some markups for you guys on YouTube as well. And in addition to that, there's also going to be a, a, a place for, for everybody joining up this in the Discord. Um, so thanks a lot, Lee, for making this deal happen, buddy. I really appreciate it. Welcome. <laughs> Lee is the guy of very few words, but he says what needs to be said. You can give that to him. So I really appreciate that, buddy. And as always, you need to run. And for everybody else, guys, keep hustling. Um, the market never runs out of opportunities. That's the one blessing. So even if you miss a run today, there's always going to be a tomorrow. Um, buddy, you drive safe. And uh, we'll see you guys on the Discord. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I've seen a lot of people who don't know what work is. I've seen a lot of people who don't know what thirst is. I've had a taste of evil and tried to cure the sickness. But I just keep my head down and focus on the facts. I'm setting 